Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, I want to talk about the elastic spring potential energy on a spring when it's stretched or compressed. I'll show you the formula for this, how Hooke's law applies to this formula and can be used to help solve for PES, and also look at conservation of energy problems if you're looking to get a little bit more advanced. So what is gravity? What is spring potential energy? What is PES? Well, we looked at Hooke's law that when we look at a spring in its natural position, and then we stretch that spring and elongate it some x by some applied force this way, there is going to want to be an f of s, a restoring force that's going to want to bring this spring back to its natural position. And it is stretched by some distance x. And we looked at this relationship of Hooke's law and we said that Fs equals Kx, where K is the spring constant and X is the distance stretched or compressed. So this is a formula for the relationships of Hooke's law, but it turns out when I stretch a spring or compress it, when I X a spring, stretch or compress, it gains potential energy. And this kind of makes sense. If your friend had a rubber band, and stretched it and kept stretching and stretching and then told you to hold it up to your nose and they were going to let go, you wouldn't want that to happen because you were afraid that the work that the spring was going to do as his FS came back and bashed you back in the face. And it turns out the more I stretch, the more I X, the greater the PE gets. All right? And this is given by the relationship of PES equals one-half k x squared. Now this is not to be confused with with ke which is just one half k, uh, mv squared. They look very similar. They're both energy formulas and that's fine. But don't be confused by this and never ever forget the squared. How can I use Hooke's law to solve for this? Well if I look at the two formulas PES equals one half k x squared. And then I look at the other spring formula on this assessment, which is going to be f of s equals kx. You see that there are very similar variables here to work with. All right. So when we get a little bit more advanced for solving for PES, sometimes you're going to have to use this to find k or x and then apply that to the PES formula. For example, I stretch a spring 2 meters with a force of 8 newtons. All right, so now I see that x is going to be equal to 2 meters. And if this situation is in equilibrium, then the f of s is going to be 8 newtons. So with this two information, I can solve now 4k. And once I do that, I could take this K now over to here and say, well, if I know given that X equals two meters and I found K using Hooke's law, now I can solve for PES. So PES equals one half k x squared. One half k was found over here. And then two meters squared. So that's going to be a little bit more advanced. You're going to have to use f of s to find one of these two and then plug it into here. All right. Next, let's look at the graph relationships. What happens to PES as I stretch a spring? Well, PES equals KX squared. So as X goes up, PE goes up, but it's going to go up exponentially. Where if I look at PES and K, those are on a linear relationship. And we remember from the last lesson that when I look at f of s as compared to x, this relationship 
is going to be linear as well. Now, the most difficult type of problems is going to be ones that use the conservation of energy. Let's look back at the energies we've seen so far. So far, we've seen delta PE, which is equal to MGH. And this is how high an object is. Then we, we moved on and we saw KE, which is pretty familiar, 1 half K uh, MV squared. And this is how fast an object's moving. Then we saw Q, and this was friction. But now we are going to add something else that we can say can be part of our transferred energy. All right. And now we have delta PES equals one half KX squared. And this is going to be if there's a spring. And just like PE could be converted over to KE, delta PE can also be converted to PES. And KE can also be converted to PES. So this is what's new for this topic. This relationship we saw in pendulums or in free fall and things like that. But now we're going to be able to solve for PES or that relationship of these two things. Let's look at an example. Say I have a tree. All right. And in that tree, I have an apple. And that apple is hanging over a spring that's in its neutral position. Well, I know that at this spot right here, the apple has delta PE. Why? Well, because it's some distance off the ground, H. Then I let go and the apple falls. It speeds up and PE is converted into KE. But then it hits the spring. And when it does so, when it hits the spring, the speed of the apples will change. It will decrease. Therefore, KE will decrease. But where does it go? Well, the answer is it goes into the spring in the form of PES. All right, and in a frictionless world where everything's wonderful, the delta PE at the top to start will be equal to the delta PE S when it stops. So essentially what just happened was the spring absorbed the delta PE energy. So if I was given like MGH, I could solve for PE and then plug it into here and solve for this. So I could look at the relationship of MGH and one half KX squared, and I'll be given a bunch of these variables and I'll be able to solve for it. For example, I'll say a one Newton apple at one meter drops onto a spring with a certain K constant. How much does that spring stretch or compress? That'd be given in this example here. The opposite is if I have a toy that, like a pop-up toy, and it is pushed down with some F. So now the spring is compressed because I pushed down with some force. Now what does that toy want to do? It wants to go up. So when I'm pushed down, let's look what's happening. When I'm pushed down, there is PES. Then I let go. PES is converted to KE, right? It's really fast when it leaves the table. Then gravity slows it. And then KE becomes delta PE. So in the reverse of the last one, if I start with some PES... I will then convert it into delta PE. So 1 half KX squared will now be MGH. All right, and you'll see a bunch of those problems in the problem set below. But don't forget, guys, I can convert just like I was able to convert here. As I was able to convert this in like a pendulum, 
I can now convert this into this energy and this into this energy as well. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Give a like, subscribe, so I can make more video videos just like this.